Green seven one and great here for another H Powers four replay. So on bottom left side as a red dynasty player, we have or Abyssin Dynasty, we have Corvinus Woods. So on top right side as the blue mullions, we have Ilona. Of course we're on prairie, which means lack of wood, and looks like blue got sort of screwed out in wood. There's actually a lot less around his town center. Red has a little bit more around him. But it just feels like blue just has a lot less. Of course, got the money pit in the field, so he's going to need a base scrape a lot of wood to get that collecting. When it comes to map generation, Epsilon is going straight for his berries. This map does have a decent amount of sheep and berries across the map, and tiny deer deposits. So there may be some extra berries from the utilize. Mullions, while Islamic, don't get the advanced berries. But they still are a food source, and seeing this map is a bit low on wood, means he's going to have to rely on the berries nonetheless. Sheep being tasked to the town center now, and now got the House of Wisdom being built. Find a good amount of sheep. This map does a good number of sheep. It may be a good idea for next to go for warrior scouts on this map and maybe even find professional scouts to grab some of the loose deer. They are in groups of three. Most of the time people don't touch them, so that can be quite a bit of food to help them keep going. And we got the much more rare Saharan trade network being flown on the field, so we may be eyeing for trade. We do start off a large stone deposit here, so maybe we can go for earlier stone walls, which are age two. If he deploys out his trade posts around here, he should skim the Saharan trade posts, get the extra taxes, while the other Tolal posts will get less uh, food tax. With the Saharan trade network and five Tolal posts, he can potentially get up to uh, what plus sixty percent improved traders, plus sixty five percent if you go get skim the Saharan trade network. Got a bit of stone being collected up, whilst the absent player is eyeing for secondary town center. Gone for economic wing, going for Fertile Crescent, which makes his town centers cheaper. So we may see town centers versus trade. At least the Saren Trade Network does offer as a 5,000 health keep, which is very nice. And this large gold deposit he start off next will give him extra gold income as well. We may see the Fambia Garrison on this map as well, instead of the uh, Grand Falani Corral. There's a secondary town center, he does spot it. Just regular scouts in the moat, no ward. Oh, just got the warrior scout upgrade. And now the scouts are far superior and also get decent health regen. This town center is almost built. He should start backing off away from it now. They have no inherent range armor. Does he got a scout there? Needs to start running. 52 health. Will perhaps take a pretty good volley of arrows. Does throw arrows in the other one, and their health regen will top them off pretty quickly. It's like two health per second regen, even while in combat. He is going for farms, or not farms, cattle ranches, which still could mean he still could go for the Fambia garrison. After all, cattle ranches do offer good food generation. Going for double mill as well. Get those doggies rolling. Yeah, I'm not sure. He could does need to delete this lumber camp if he wants to get the, the uh, Grand Falani Corral. So, there's not a whole lot of wood on the map. They'll just do try to stand and fight, but the health regen is very important. Does eat some of the town set of arrows here. That Spory Scout does take some hits there, but he can just simply cycle them around. One health remaining. He does escape out of there. These Warrior Scouts need to fall back for about three seconds and they'll get healed on up. Now we're going to see a couple barracks in a stable who's eyeing for some aggression. No trade just yet. Mm -hmm. 
Scalp does take a bit of fire there. A number of cows there. There's a tertiary town center. He does spot the tertiary center center and does lose a uh, scout to it. So we got quite a bit of village production for the Avacid player. The mons have to rely on the cows. And like I said, he can eye for a trade post and get that going. It'd be a bit expensive on the toll outpost. He does delete the lumber camp, and he is probably going to eye the Grand Fulani Corral, which will give him some great food generation on a map that does have a decent amount of initial food. But later on, the lack of trees can make it hard for later food generation. But the Saharan Trade Network does now offer additional taxes through food. Get about 20 or 25% additional food from trade. Along with the 40% with the gold with the toll outposts. Both the Abyssin Dynasty and the Mollians do have some really good trade, great trade. Mongols, I have say they're perhaps a solid third when it comes to uh, best trade. Military wing now being deployed on out. I still say the Abyssin's have one that has the best trade in the game. Just simply having a uh, uh, traders costing one third less is just great for them. Not to mention they get plus 25% here and plus 30% there, effectively getting plus 55% better to trade. Mongols can get up to plus 30% uh, through the Silk Road and 20% and through the Stone Commerce. But uh, I'm going to be honest, improved Stone Commerce is never worth it. The basic Stone Commerce is generally pretty good, but still pretty expensive, costing a thousand resources. In comparison, the House of Wisdom does offer, also costs a thousand here, but plus thirty percent as well. So this is just straight up three times better, better than the stone commerce that the Mongols get. And this initial one here, sure, is five percent weaker than the Mongols Silk Road, but it's more or less similar. The Mongols, of course, can get faster traders with the Yam network, but I still rate overall the cheaper traders that the Abyssins can get is just straight up better. Plus, if you ever go over the trade wing, you get a handful of traders for free. Jumpstarting the trade economy. Sofa's now being deployed on the field. The Malian player, of course, has advanced to the next age. And now it's going for the veteran Musafati warrior. Don't see the veteran warrior scout. Veteran warrior scouts do gain the anti range bonus damage. Going from there. Sofas push way forward. Does have veteran sofas. Import armor has not been researched just yet. Camel riders, however, will be very effective versus the sofas as well as the warrior scouts. We're going to need some Donzo. And Mustafari warriors are good and all, but cameras are not heavy. Of course, most time of uh, most players don't go for camera riders, mass camera riders, unless they are in elite or in the um, imperial age. But when they get all the bonuses, they become very good. Right now, they're just okay, especially the two free ones he gets. As the players start to claw some gilons. Absent is the are pretty nice with boot camp, and they can be supported by some excellent archer for composite bows. You also going for some lance as well. Absent is has a very solid economy and have a lot of good options. Absent is does have Golden Age Tier 1, one of the best economic benefits in the game, and also get some good agriculture as well. And does slip on by there, but will slip it on by to his doom. 
Sheep does get left behind there. He's trying to follow the scout there. You can see him still walking, so he's still being leashed to the warrior scout. I wonder what happens to the sheep if it, if it stays like that. This wood deposit being cleaned on up. These forces are moving around. The Lancers and Camarades will easily pick them off and make it one villager, but that's probably about it. Though he does not have textiles, does quickly pick off one. And it's more or less inside all the villagers, so they're having trouble engaging them. But that does only get one villager there. The other ones. The other two units do abandon their buddies. These sofas are falling back. Got 23 versus 23 military units, but the Mali Empire, of course, has these units trapped. Let's switch out the uh, number of villager mode and go to the economy mode because there is quite a disparity in villager numbers. A thousand thousand five hundred versus a thousand thousand five hundred. Their economy is quite similar thanks to the Grand Falani Pharrell. Six village on food and has a thousand food income. The, fertile, the food research does improve the cattle ranches. Imported armor, melee armor being researched. A decent number of Musafati warriors now being plowed in the field. And does have another mining pit here. Up north, got this mining pit being finalized. And this one down here should be pretty safe. More farms now being built. Lewis claimed two relics and picked another two relics. So the Mullion player is going to be swimming in gold. Passive gold income. It looks like the, these units finally get cleaned on up. Sofa does go down there. We do now have this secret site captured on up. Even more passive gold income. The last relic is here and within Red's borders. Watch well, pick that up. Imam's finding some sacred sites there. This one being tested as a sacred site now. Now I've got some Maganels being pulled on the field, thanks to his free improved siege engineers. There's also a bit of a ghost, uh, ghost here. Oh wait, no, that. So there may be another Maganel underneath this one. Nope, it's just the building scaffolding. Three Maganels one field. He's not fighting against any ranged forces, but they should be very effective as most fighting wars. After all, Maganels can do decently well against Castle Age infantry. When it gets up to elite infantry, they will start having trouble with, with the elite, oh, elite army tactics research. Walls will go down. Red's now advancing with a sizable army. Maganels do offer good anti-structure support. It does spot Malian's Maganel there, which could easily get picked off. Maybe the knights and scouts and camel riders charge and hit it. Speaking about stuff, Musafati warriors and Sofos engage these villagers. We're going to see maybe a bit of a base race. Sacred Sight has been captured. Sacred Sight victory in favor of Blues, eventually. These forces push way forward to force down some of these other structures. Red is losing a lot of stuff back here. Loose fighting warriors are everywhere. Bill's just getting hit among everything else. Red is advancing. Blue does not have army back here to stop it. Only small little force here. You may want to ban this gold mine. Make his way over here. Maganel finds a good splash hit there on the spearman. His opposing Maganels get some great hits there. All this stuff's going down, various unit structures going down there. Red has a defense going on. Cows are going to be tipped. 
Being near the Grand Fulani Corral still gives him extra food generation. So he's only taking out half the food generation from those units. Let the cows be free. Now he's trying to tip over the cows. Bass in town center, so at least in a better drop off location. So there's a lot of food on the ground he will need to collect on up. More wood being collected down there. Sofa does go down there. Sofa does take a hit there. All the cows have been set free. Now our blue sounds are just getting hit. He does have the Syrian Trade Network Garrison. No Spring Ball in place on the hit. Barracks getting hit now. Blue has Army 14. Blue Spotty Wars camouflage way forward. Ambushes the Maganels. Very nice. Sofos will quickly go on down to those crossbows. Most Fighting Warriors will beat Spear in 1v1 combat. And they will decently well versus the Gilons. Gilons right now have 224 damage. All the Most Fighting Warriors are now down. And distract our uh, Wolo. That was interrupted there. Most Fighting Warriors do do about 26 damage per strike against Gilons. They also have half the health against Gilons with roughly slower attack speed. So they're roughly some of the 1v1 to Gilom's it looks like. Definitely a bit more cost effective. Most Fighting Warriors cost 80, Gilom's cost what, 130, 125? 150, much more expensive. <laughs> Barracks trying to go on down there. Aaron's breaking his way forward. Blue has an army of eight, going for more sofas. More of the stuff being destroyed. Mining pit still alive, providing 43 gold per minute. Now even less. More cattle ranchers being pulled on the field. The mining player doesn't have a whole lot of gold at the moment. He has a lot of stone or wood. So maybe want to actually pass these villages to collect up some berries if he's having trouble. Actually, there's plenty of food here in the tipped over cows. So there's plenty of food for the mulling player to pull out stuff. He could go for some sort of food and wood based unit rather than trying to pull out cows going to the cattle ranches. Well, while pulling out cows and going to cattle ranches. It's fine against a good number of crossbowmen, so maybe Donzo could be an emergency unit. Or maybe just archers, I don't know. Fine against a decent number of spearmen. Up north, got these various infantry forces pushing way forward. These villages are now idle. That's 17 villages are idle. Blue has killed off 47 villages at spawn, while red has now well, only killed off 13 at the moment. Villages need to run away. Got some more exposed villages there. The sofas could find another opportunity to engage. Of course, they have limited vision range. Does spot these villagers now. Let's get a nice spear brace there. Most body warriors engaging as well. Villagers shrinking that crossbowman down south. More most body warriors hitting some red villagers. Red is now pulling some batting rams. Front line has a very good number of batting rams. Blue is starting to get a nice little defensive army 40 versus 52 these villagers are trying to run away these villagers are getting gunned down more villagers going down here we'll find some more villagers over here and red is now advancing red only destroyed three landmarks the sand trade network the capital and the grand Fulani corral let's pick up a relica he's going for a wool 
Okay, it's not close enough for anybody, actually. Does not get any conversions there. Moose Body Warriors and Sofas charge away forward. Spearman can be very useful against those Sofas, as well as crossbows. And there's a couple of Lancers there. The Moose Body Warriors will be useful engaging with them. More Sofas charging away forward. Red does shrink some units over there. Red has 50 filters with 84. Cal is still being deployed on the field. And another Imam goes down there. Mosque will be destroyed. Hounds are firing away. Got some more sofas being put on the field. Got a line of forces being brought back here. They may have missed Rally. They need to be running across the map. Mining pit is here. He's going for the mining pit. Or maybe not. Spearman and Gilons being picked on off. There's a good number of forces on the batting ram, slowly picking them on off. Blue will probably not hold if they, when these reinforcements arrive. But the batting ram does go down. And Blue does two sick sites in the field, but the third one has been decaptured, the middle one. So no sick side victory in his favor. Another batting ram goes down. These villagers getting stabbed. Good number of them going down. And now. Blue has less than 40 villagers. And Blue does back the game now. It's Anne Great saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.